Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain you the theor theoretical concepts of uh, DDoS attack, as well as the complete code explanation of the DDoS attack classification by machine learning. So, before understanding uh, the code explanation or doing the code, first I would like to explain you what is actually DDoS attack or the complete abbreviation is denial of services. So let's see what it is actually. Okay, so before understanding the concept, I would like to show you the what is the complete project pipeline. What we're going to do in complete project from A to Z. So our first step is the collection of the data. Collection of the data actually this this problem this project is a supervised learning machine supervised machine learning project So for, for so for that we need a data which has uh, input and also the label uh, Target value or you can say output of the model Yeah, so I have collected the data later on this slide So I will show you from where I did collect the data and what kind of features I have in the data, okay, and how, how, how I have split the data into the testing training. Okay, so first step is the collect the data, this one. And after that, the second step is, sorry for that, the second step is we will pre-process the data. Of course, the data we will get is, that would be really dirty, uh, a lot of missing values, the, uh, the features would be in, uh, diff in different data types, we need to convert them. We need to convert the categorical English language into in the form of numerical uh, If you find any problem like that and also we will convert the the target column in the form of numerical as well Okay, uh, we will remove the null values is up to you either we remove it we replace it uh, We will see that in the code explanation now, after that, after pre-processing the data, the next step is data analysis. In the data analysis section, we will explore the data. What kind of patterns are in the data? And how our data is distributed? Either it is a normal distributed or not. We need to explore it, see the data in the form of graphs. So after performing the data analysis, uh, the next step, that is the data splitting. Of course, before training any model, machine learning model, we need to train. We need to split the data into uh, two sections. So, one section is the training section, means the input data we will feed to the model to train our model, and then one section is for the testing of our model to check the accuracy, F1 score, and different parameters. Here I have split the data into 70% as a training data, 30% as a test data, but there is no exact number, there is no exact threshold to set the training and testing data. But the better is if you keep the maximum data for training, like 70%, 80%, uh, you can keep like 50, 65% for training, the rest of the data for the testing is up to you and it's up to you on your data. If you, if you have of really big data then you have to keep like 65 percent for training and rest of the data for the testing now after splitting the data the next step is to train the model so in this in this tutorial what I'm going to do is that I'm going to train three machine learning models <clears throat> okay so the first one is the random forest that's the machine supervised machine learning model it is actually made of uh, collections of decision tree. So when, we, when you collect a lot of decision tree, that makes it a uh, random forest. So as the name suggests, you know, the forest, forest is made of the trees. So that's why it's a random forest. If you don't have any idea about these algorithms, I would suggest you to uh, find any tutorial blogs uh, to get the understanding of these models, how they work, what kind of mathematical operation is at the back of these models, okay, and then come back to this video. In this video, I'm not going in the depth of the mathematical operation of these models, uh, analysis, and that stuff. I will simply 
implement implement uh, that models or train those models in this project okay now after random forest um, I will train the logistic regression then then I'm gonna also train the neural network so what I will do I will train three models on my data okay and then I will evaluate those models like I will uh, look if you go to the this step the evaluation of the model the green one this one and you can see that what I will do I will test the models on my 30% test data so the test data where this one is my test data I will test on this one and for each model I'm going to calculate the accuracy f1 score precision recall confusion matrix okay so for each model I will do that and after that I will also calculate the ROC curve of the each model and at the end of three models of the end of after testing three models what I will do I will compare these the accuracy of three models with the help of ROC curve okay uh, the purpose is to to know which model is best um, which model is best to classify the the DDoS attacks from the data okay then uh, after that I will select the best model among these three models uh, to used on my real data for the classification of DDoS attacks. So this is the complete pipeline which I'm going to follow to collect the data and from here till here the classification on the real data. Okay, now let's move forward. Before going to write the code about the the training models, machine learning, what is that? First, need to understand what is actually DDoS attack. I call it DDoS, DDoS attack. Um, some people pronounce it a little bit different but the proper uh, abbreviation of that is distributed denial of services so what it is let's read the definition so it typically occurs when multiple systems flood the bandwidth or resources of a victim such as such an attack is often the result of multiple compromised systems for example botnet flooding the targeted system with generating the huge network traffic in simple me way means if you look at the diagram it's mean that here's one attacker okay who's attacking on the victim networks what he is doing he is just is give is generating a huge traffic on the victim network to make all the system busy okay we dealing with that network and the, the the attacker is just trying to hang all those systems uh, which are in that network like it, if it could be macbook windows system servers and everything he's just sending the, the viruses viruses on that network to make to, to create huge traffic in that network to, to hang complete network of the victim so that's actually meaning of that one if you still have any confusion in that one just read any definition from wikipedia or understand uh there are a lot of very good videos about those denial of uh, like on the YouTube. A lot of uh, people they explain it there, so you can understand that better there. Now, to create to train uh, the machine learning models, okay, we need the best data. I know that creating machine learning models, writing Python code, is a bit easier today in this time where we have the chat gpt and a lot of bots there but the main the main thing is in this project is the data okay i have seen a lot of data but those data are really old now at this moment i have tested them i have checked them even i have one more video on my channel about the malware detection you can also view that video so what i have done i have chosen this this uh, research paper so this research paper uh, it gives the review of all the data of the DDoS attack if you if you look at the red line here uh, there exist a number of such data sets such as uh, DARPA 98 KDD 99 these are the da malware DDoS uh, data sets okay and these are really huge like in these are in GPs and this research paper towards generating new intrusion detection reduction data set in intrusion traffic characterization this paper said if you even if you search the name of this paper for paper you can search uh, you can find on google what i will do i will share the link of this paper as well as the link of the data 
which I'm going to use for this project uh, under my video so you can access the data and paper from there. Okay, you can read the uh, abstract by yourself. I just highlighted the important uh, information here. If I just move forward, you can see the data set which I'm going to use in my project. So the data set, there's some uh, little bit description of the data. Uh, so this guy, the paper which I've shown you, these authors, uh, they capture uh, they capture some data uh, from the from the network where they have faced some DDoS attacks, denial of services attack from the hackers. So they have captured those kind of attacks and then they store in this data. So when they say they start capturing, uh, the, uh, the start capturing of the data started at nine am on monday uh, july 3rd okay and it ran exact duration for five days so it was the whole uh, capturing of the data was um ran for the exact duration of five days so it ended on 5 p.m on friday july 7th okay that's the duration of the capturing of the data from the network and what's the important thing is you can read by yourself that's the, the important thing is this one the red circle you can see this one so it says that the the data is publicly available at this website and you can access the data from there there are there are normally file five files from five different days on the right side you can see that the monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday five days and they have uh, detecting a lot of packets from the network okay so you can see that in your data now before uh, going forward before moving forward okay let's move to the code explanation from as I told you from this figure from start till end and during that during the explanation of code i will come back to these slides because i have some some images to to teach you better about the model how it works okay what kind of things are there so let's move to the explanation of the code so this is the uh, my coding file folder so in this folder i have the main file which is the Jupyter Notebook with extension of that one. And I have one more folder, which is the data. So inside the data, if I just double press on it, I have the data set. I cannot see the data here, but I'll show you the data. Yeah, inside the data, uh, inside the data folder, there is a file which is ddos.csv. That's my data, which I'm going to use to work on this data set. Okay. If I go back. I have uh, already opened this file here, so it's running at this moment here. So this is my coding file, which I'm going to explain you from top to bottom, explaining you, I'm going to explain everything. So for that, I have uh, created a table of content here, uh, which shows everything uh, from start to end, uh, like importing libraries, data pre-processing, and everything till the model comparison okay now before moving to the um, code explanation further uh, let's let's check the data so as I told you I will put the link in the description of the video uh, that link the data link and as well as the uh, this code file which I have put on my github so I will put the link in the video description so let's first download the data because the data has a lot of files it has around five to seven files i'm just using only one single file so it's up to you if you want to use that those all files uh, you can use them you can download it from here so let's first download let's check it how to download it because it is a bit uh, uh, you have to follow some steps to download the data so when you will copy the link you will come to the, this page so that's the official page of the that data, which is CIC IDS 2017. This is the data set. You can you can read all the descriptions here uh, from start to end, how they have collected the data, when they have collected the data. All the information is given here. Even if you just look at the 
left side of the data, the research, the membership, the data set, and each and everything is mentioned here. That's the actual official website of the data set. Okay. So it means the data is really good, really informative, and you can train any machine learning model or deep learning model on this data. Now, if you look at the size of the data, you can see that the Monday normal activity 11 G, GB, Tuesday's data, that's the 11 G, uh, GB actually. Wednesday, that's, uh, okay, that's combination of attacks and normal activity, 13 G. Thursday, same. Uh, and then I'm using this one last one, Friday. The attacks plus normal activity, 8.3 G. I'm just using, I just selected this file. There is no um, any, any main reason to select the data. I just picked that file. Okay. Now, the question is how you can read the further description of the data, like Monday, Tuesday, and everything is mentioned here. Now, if you scroll down and go at the end of the this page, this one, you will see a download this data set, this, this one. A link is there. If you just press it, so it will go, uh, it will, Take you to the new page where you will put your information okay name email organization job title country you will select the country and submit it then they will provide you the uh, access of this link okay that's the one way to access the data if you want to if you don't want to put the information there I, I would suggest you go for this method this is the official one and with this method you can access complete the data if you're going to do a dissertation or any big project, you must have to go from this side, okay? By following that criteria. There's one more thing is for you. If you if you just want to take the sample of the data, uh, if you just go to the Kaggle and write it there, the CIC IDS 2017, and there you will see the data sets there as well, okay? So these are the three data sets uh, which are uh, published by which are uploaded by these three three authors. There's one more improved version of this one You can also use that one. This is 11 GB. GB. If I just press on this one network intrusion data sets, okay, if I just go down Let's check it. So it says that the it has all those files here Friday working hours Friday Monday Thursday Okay, Tuesday and in this way. So it has some sample files here which are around 884 MBs data. So that's also quite big data. You can also use that all the files and combine them vertically. You can uh, use you can use this data here. Okay. Okay. You can use for the. I think these three all are same. This one is the last one is a bit different. That's the improved version of the data. So you can also use that one. But I would suggest you for that process which I told you this one now let's move to the programming file how to use this data to classify the ddos attacks like malware from malware from the data so first step is importing the libraries here i have imported the libraries i'm going to take this project um not uh not on Expert level, I will explain you each and everything in a simple way so that you can easily understand it. So, if you don't have any expertise in uh, Python, machine learning, it's okay. You will understand what I'm saying. I will explain you everything in an easy way. Now, here first, I'm importing the libraries because to use the functions, models, and evaluation matrix, I need some built in functions. So for that, I need some libraries. So I have imported the libraries here. So this library is used to deal with the uh, files, like the comma separated Excel files. So I have uploaded, I have used that one. NumPy is used to deal with the array, arrays. These are the libraries to plot the graph on the screen or in the Jupyter Notebook. That's why I'm using. The most common one is matplotlib. You, you have to import that one. If you want more interactive graphs, then you have to use the CBOR, okay? So import CSV, you also have to import that one uh, for the CSV file. Now, 
uh, further on I will transfer the data I need this one for that one I have machine learning model libraries just copy paste this code you don't need to understand at this moment just copy paste them in your Jupyter notebook and now after that I have some evaluation metric of course I need to evaluate the model so for that I need for that I need those uh, functions so that's why I'm importing them and this is the same one okay now let's move to the importing the data what I'm doing here I'm saying PD PD was my this library this one this okay so I have given a nickname to my pandas library which is PD so I'm saying here the PD dot read CSV it has a one function read CSV and inside that I'm giving the path of my data file okay now if you go back look at that one this is my main file okay in my main file there is one with beside that one I have one folder data so inside the data there is a data file which is CSV so then for that I have to give the exact location of the data from uh, with respect to the code file so I'm saying data inside there's a file just pick that one and store in the df variable I will run it you can run with control enter or if you just press on this cell you can also use this button to run your file let me zoom in for you more <coughs> okay now here uh, I want to just I would just want to see the three rows of the top three rows of my data set so I have said df dot had three rows just show me the three rows that's it now you can see some statistics of your data some statistic here not the complete but some so you can see some columns here flow duration destination ports so that's the information uh, that was in the data okay some columns are missing you can't see some columns here but you can see a sample of your data okay look at that one the last one this is really important that's the target variable okay that's the target variable in the data and this is the these are the input variables and if you look at that one it says three rows you got the three rows here you don't want to because I told them I just need three rows and 79 columns are in my data okay it's mean that 78 columns are, are gonna be, I will use them for the training the model I mean as an input and the one label one will be my as a target variable if you have confusion in why we have uh, input and target variable this is how machine learning uh, works this is the actually the classification is the problem of supervised learning so in supervised learning method we have to give a supervision of the input data so this line this label tells that the that this line this line this is a benign one okay so this line so it's just labeling each and every record with the label so in this way we'll train the model okay so let's move forward to do some pre-processing so now if i just look at the column stamps you know you can see that there's some space uh, before that uh before that column name there is some space and what i'm going to do is that I will use the function. I will say that my data frame inside there are some columns. Okay, use the function string dot script. So what it does, it removes the spaces before the column names. So mean you will get the normal column names without the, any free spaces. That's the actually error in one data, which I am removing and just I'm running it, saving it, saving, replacing those spaced columns with the normal columns names. Now I want to know the unique labels in my data sets label which I show have shown you before this one so I want to know how many unique labels are there I can see one here but I want to know all the unique labels in my whole data set so 
when I run this code, it says that you have benign, you have DDoS label, but there's as well NEN. Means there are some records or rows which are empty. So, what do I need to do? I need to remove those records. Well, you can do many things with that one. You can replace that null value with average of your complete data. If you if you know the true value, true label of that record, you can use that information to fill up that null values, null values. But at this moment, I don't know anything. I'm not gonna replace that one. I'm not gonna put, fill up those null values. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just simply gonna remove those records from my whole data. Okay. Let's uh, plot that one with the help of graph. So what it says, let's run it. It says that you have around 34 columns which doesn't have any null value, but there are some around 50 columns which has the null values. Okay, if you just go to the code, so that's the plt dot figure. In this figure, we are defining a figure with the size of the figure inside the figure. It says that I just need only one figure. And I'm defining the name of the figure, uh, size of the figure, sorry, which takes the shapes. So the first one is the, the width, second one is height. Okay, if I just reduce it by four, you can see the small figure here. Okay, after that, I'm saying the PLT, PLT, I'm using the library which I have imported above. PLT.hist, histogram, I want to show. The histogram on the screen. I'm saying that my data set, if there is any null value, is null, sum them up, okay, and show them in the histogram. After that, I'm just selecting the label. Okay, first label would be not null, the second one is null, defining, giving the main hiding to the graph, defining x labels with the features, y label with the number of features, okay. And PLT that shows which which shows the plot on the in the Jupyter notebook, and you can see the graph here. Okay, now we got some null values. We need to remove them. Fine. I'm gonna say that I need I want to know those columns which has the null values. So I'm gonna I'm doing here. I have uh I have I've created one function which takes one parameter which is data frame. Okay. So it says that data frame is null dot sum. Okay, so it counts all the null value of each column, fine, and it stores in the missing values. Okay, after that I'm doing the same stuff which I have done above, fine, and I'm plotting a bar plot here, yeah, bar plot, and giving x labels, y labels, title, main title, and show. Okay, here I am passing the parameter data frame which will go here. And it will get used by this function. Okay. Remember the DF is my data, data, the data which I have imported from the file. Okay. If I just run it, look at that one. It shows these columns. These columns on the right side, they have the null values. The columns which are on the right uh, left side, they don't have any null values. So I have to remove some records from the these columns okay how to remove that really simple function is there the fancy function is that use the data and just use the function drop an a it will remove all the null values from your file from your data from your data frame okay and I'm storing those uh, all the I'm, I'm storing that in data dot f data frame now so this data frame doesn't have any null value inside that. Okay. Now uh, that's the same function to show the null values. Okay. If I run this one, it says that in number of columns. So these are the number of columns, eighty. Okay. The number of null values. It says that there's there's zero null values in your 
80 columns, okay? So that's why it's a one bar here. Now, sometimes, sometimes what happens is that in your data set, uh, <coughs> null values uh, can be represented with the NUL, regular null string, not the string, I mean null uh, parameter for character, or it could be an empty space, or, but sometimes it happens that it, it can be represented with any different character. So what I'm doing here, I'm saying that use INF, okay? Here I'm saying that if there is any value like INF like that, treat us as a NAN. So what they what the people do, if they have some null value, they also represent that null value with INF or with any special character. So I'm here saying that if if I just notice in my data that there is INF is acting as a null value, I will replace that one with the NAN so, so that the Python can easily handle that, okay? That code is doing the same stuff, fine? Now, if you move further on, before moving, before training the model, we must understand one thing that the, the model, the machine learning model, doesn't know about anything English word words. It doesn't take English word sentences or anything as an input. We have to convert the data in the form of numerical values, I means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. So here I'm just checking the data types of my uh, my data frame. So is there any object data type? So if there would be any object data type, I have to convert that data uh, in the form of numerical form. Object, it could be an object data. The object data means the categorical data in English form, like, so for example, male, female. So in our case, we have DDoS and benign, two categories. So, so those are English words. We have to convert them into in the form of numerical form. So I have checked that it says everything is false, but there is one label one which has true, which has the object data frame. So we need to change that one. Okay. Now, if I come here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to convert the label in the data frame to numerical value. So I'm saying here in a data frame, there is the column label. Currently map map that map those categories which is benign to zero and DDoS to one. So this map function will map the benign with zero and DDoS with one and will store it in the data frame. We replace that, that column with those numerical values here. Okay. Simple. That's the function I want going I'm again using it. Uh matplot one to plot the histogram of my labels, I'm giving the labels as input. These are the bins. Bins are the Bins are used to declare the spaces here, okay, between the, the bars, okay. And these are the color one. You can you can give the the labels to the uh, I'm saying that B9 is equal to zero. This one. I'm giving the label with the help of X text here in the math plot. The I'm giving the X axis, Y axis, and showing here. Okay. So it says that in your data set the benign category are 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 around equal to the d dose there's not too much difference between the two these two okay they almost they are looking same fine so what that means is that if over both categories are totally equal or e closely equal to each other it means our data is balanced okay so this is a really good thing if you have the balanced data set, then you can use the accuracy as your evaluation matrix. So if your data is not balanced, then you cannot use the accuracy, accuracy equation or accuracy matrix for the evaluation model. It is a concept here, okay? So they, they are almost equal to each other. You can see the, the, the count of the V9 is here, the D dos is here. It can be it is seen here. Now, uh, Python has one function which is described. The pandas has one function which is described. It describes the complete data set. So I'm saying df my data frame describe it. So it is describing here. 
So here you can see this is data fips. I'm just using the original data frame to know how my data looks. Okay. So it gives all the explanation. It says that you have how how many how many records are there? What's the mean of your record? What's the standard deviation of your record? What's the minimum value? You can see it's a zero here. And you can see 25% is 80. 75% is 80. And maximum is, is 61,538. Okay. It looks like that our data is not normalized. Okay. But we can't do anything regarding that. The thing is that this is the network data set. Okay, we haven't created that one. We can't change it. It's a network data set. So we, uh, the the author, they have captured the data within a passage of time. So you will you will find the data like that, the network one. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, let's move forward and uh, plot the uh, histogram to know each and every feature of the of of our data frame. So if I just plot that one, I've, I'm saying figure five. Okay. I have written a loop. I'm saying data frame dot columns. Pick all these 79 columns, 78 columns. Okay. I'm taking one column by one and plotting the histogram of each and every column one by one. Okay. I'm saying data frame, pick one column, plot the histogram, show it, then go to the next, plot the second, third, and so on. Okay. If I just look at the destination one, look at this one. Okay, you can see the zero values are more as compared to the other values. In the same way, you can see all the data sets uh, values here. So I have plot all the graphs here. So these are these are all the graphs. Some data are different. Some columns are different. We can't remove them. The thing is that. This is the network data set. We have no control on this data set. Okay. Try your best to use this data set. Okay. This is the last one which I've seen yet. Zero means the benign and D dose is the, is the uh, one is that one. Okay. Now it's, it's a numerical form. Zero, one. Fine. Now let's move forward. Okay. We have imported the data. We have done some pre processing on the data. We have done some data analysis as uh, on our data set. If I go more back, okay, like this one. Data analysis, feature extraction, feature formatting, we have converted the data in the form of numerical. We have explored the data here, the data analysis. Now it's time to split the data in the 70-30, or it's up to you what kind of splitting you wanna do in your project, but I'm gonna pick the 70-31. So, if you don't know why we split it, split the data. Let's let's look look let's search on the internet why we do it. So I'm searching on the Google. So so that you know this is the actual way to to learn from the internet. So I'm beside teaching you the Python code, I'm also teaching you how to do the self learning, how to search on the Google. You just search like that, okay, and come to the images. So these images are very self explanatory. Uh, really, the architectures are really amazing. You can understand here from here. Like if I search here's methodology, train and test. Yeah, let's search this one. Now, uh, this is really good picture. I can see that. Look at this one. It says you have big data. Okay, you have to split the data into training and testing. With the training data, we will train the machine learning algorithm. After training, it will become a classifier. Classifier means that can classify between two categories. Now, we will put the test data, give test data to the model to evaluation the evaluation of the result or use the real world data to this model to get the result from this model, okay? That's why we split the data. There are, it could, we can also split in the form of training, test, and validation as well. It's up to you. So let's start, uh, let's split the data into training and testing. Um, you can do one thing. Uh, 
I feel data is really big, like of like 15 GP, 20 GP. So you can you have to convert your data in the form of NumPy arrays because the NumPy arrays are much more faster, 50% faster than the lists. Okay. Um, so that saves the computational power. You can use that one, but I'm not gonna. Uh, I have just I was just testing it. I can use that one. I don't need it. I have much more computational power. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just uh, I'm okay with the list. If you are not okay with the list uh, data frame, you you just convert that one into NumPy arrays, okay, and use these uh, variables in this function here, okay. And then you can use that one both the same okay what i'm doing here i'm just i'm okay with the list so i'm saying here that split the data into the input and output one but before that what i'm doing here is i'm dropping the label column from my da main data frame x axis one says that column so if you want to drop something as from the from the columns you have to men mention x axis is equal to one because x is equal to one represent the columns. Okay, zero represent the rows, one x represent the columns. So I'm saying drop the label column from the data frame and rest of the columns store the rest of the columns in my x. So this is my input data. Okay, this is my input data. Now, this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, the I'm, I'm just picking uh, from here the label column okay label column and just store in the my the y so this is actually my the target value target column I can say that. okay fine so now as I told you before I have imported a function which is train test split function you can see on the top of that one top, uh, where, where I have uh, uh, imported the libraries so what I have done I have used this function train test split inside that one I have given the input data input columns and output column here I am saying here the test size the test site would be 0 0.30 means I want 30 percent of the test data and rest of the data uh, rest of the data go to the training section okay random sta uh, state defines the seed number that's okay so it gives me as an output x training data x test y the label this is the label of training data this is the label of test data okay i got the r split of the data with the help of this function x train dot shape x test dot shape you can see the shapes of the train and test you can see the 40 46,365 are the training rows, rest of them are the test rows. Now, we have done it, we have split the data, now it's time to train the models, okay? Train the models on train data and test those models on our test data. I just added this one, but I think it's quite big. I me, mean, this, this is just looking so weird to me. Let's remove that one. So in this way, you can create the hidings on in your uh, Jupyter notebook. You have to just convert it from convert into the markdown, and then create the hidings here. Like I just created that. Now it's looking good. Okay. Now my first model is the random forest. So I'm 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 using the SQL Learn library, uh, which has the function functions of almost all the machine learning models. So you can import that library. I have imported on the top of this code. You can import the library for that specific model just there are just only three steps just only three steps are there to train a complete machine learning model with the help of sklearn you don't need to write the hundreds or 200 lines to train a model uh, to uh, train a model to evaluate it just three lines are there so before explaining you i just need to explain one slide here which i made uh, this start of that one if i go at the end this one so this tells that what three lines are there okay this figure is uh for the logistic regression but the process is same for all the models okay so the first line the first line is used to initialize the the model 
Okay, here it is saying initialize the logistic regression model. So in this way, you just write the name of the model. Inside the bracket, you can define the parameters you want to uh, customize, your, customize your model, yeah? So here I'm initializing the model. The next line, train the model on the training data. In the next line, you say the model name dot fit, and you fit the data, you fit your model on the train and the training data here. Okay, this is the training data input columns, and this is the target one. Third line is used to predict the output on the test data. Really simple. Three lines to train any models. So you're gonna see the repetition in all three lines. Okay, in three lines in in the main file. Okay, there's some extra code as well. If you want to do it, you can do it, but let me explain you. Now look at this one. I'm, I'm going to train the random forest first. Boy. And the random forest classifier, okay, I'm, I'm initializing my model with RF model name, okay. What it does, uh, inside that I'm giving a parameter, so I, I, I need uh, 50 estimators, means it's a, it's a, as I told you, that the random forest is made of trees. Okay, so I'm giving here the 50 trees to make a complete forest. So it means estimators are 50, and that's the seed number 42. It's okay. After that, I'm fitting the fitting my model on the train data, which is X train and Y train, we which we got above here. X train Y train. So here it trains the model. Okay, it will take time here. Data is quite big, it will take time here. Okay, after training the model, you will get the train model here, here, and it will provide you a function dot predict which will take the x data and will predict the 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 output of x data. Okay, now we got the train model. And we, we have given the test data and we got some predictions here. These are some predictions of the model, RF predicts, okay? Must remember this variable. Now, RF model provides many, many functions. I am, what I'm going to do is get, I'm, I'm gonna use a function features importance to know that what features, what columns are important for my model to predict the good output. So these are the code which takes all the columns features names this is a simple loop that's the matplotlib which i have uh, explained to you many times it just defines the size inside that when you're giving the column names okay range importance importance you guys here with that function here you're giving here inside that you're giving the indexes names okay y ticks is the same to give the name to those categories x labels are there title is there show is there okay after that you will see a graph okay so what it says that these are the features, these are the columns, okay? These are really important for your random forest algorithm. 66 is really important. 868 is really important, okay? In this way, it's, it's, it's declining, okay, here to here. What you can do is that you have trained the model and you got the importance. What you can do, you can delete this. Because you don't need these are not important for your model to predict the proper output. Okay, you can delete them as well. Now let's move forward to you know here I have given the 50 estimators. This one. You can plot them. How the how the how the random forest made the decisions on your on your data sets. Okay, so these are the 50. Uh, estimators are complete tree there. You can zoom in to see what's happening inside that one. This is this is actually decision in each node. It makes a decision to move on the left or right. Okay, till here. Now <coughs> we have trained the model. We have test the model. The now it's time to evaluate the model on the testing. Confusion matrix is really important thing for in evaluating the model. If you do, if you have no idea about that one, currently search any YouTube video blog to know about that one. Then come here. Okay. We are gonna we are gonna use the what what we are gonna use here. 
Okay, we will calculate the accuracy of first go recall precision confirm accuracy. Let's go. So, because I'm going to create the three confusion matrix for three different models, so instead of writing code again and again, I have created one function of confusion matrix, and I'm going to use that function again and again. Fine. I'm saying this is my function name, okay? Pass the y true attributes, means the y target of the, of the test data. The values which are predicted by the models. Class is name, title, title of the uh, model. Is it random forest or is it logistic regression or what this one? Okay. Inside that one, that's really simple. I'm using a confusion metric function giving the input data, which I explained you there. Rest of the code is same. Just I'm here just plotting the heat map with the Seaborn library. Okay. You can read about these parameters and you can add, modify them. These are just defining colors, shape, size, and classes and everything. Title is for main title, X label, Y label, and the shows both are the same. Okay. That's the function I have created it. Here I'm using accuracy functions to give the labels of Y test and the the prediction done by the model. Okay, you give as two things input and it gives you the accuracy. I'm storing in this one. In the same way, I'm calculating F1 score, precision, and recall, and with the help of print statements, I'm plotting this all everything here. Look at that one. I got the 0 0.9 accuracy of this model on the test data, unseen data. F1 score is there, which is which is really good. Precision is there, which is perfect. Recall is there, which is also really good. Okay. Now let's let's use the function of confusion matrix to draw the confusion matrix. So here I'm saying giving the labels of Y test prediction done by the model and classes. These are two classes. Remember that our classes were in the numerical form zero one. Okay, so that will convert those classes back into the names. No, that's not going to convert. It. That's I'm going to use those classes as a here x axis. Sorry for that. Here like that. Okay, so and then title means render for us to configure matrix one. Okay. Now, if I just zoom out, that's the configure matrix of uh, my render for us. That's the true positive, that's the true negative, means model is perfect, perfectly identify the true labels, uh, the 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 attacks attacks okay attacks are here non attacks it has unique perfectly identified that one but there's some results this is 10 so my model predicted 10 result as a false so that's why this is accuracy is a little bit low okay why now let's move to the next model which is logistic regression Simple, which I have defined you in this slide. This is this this is the by the way slides of the logistic regression. You, you just need to define the model, give the data to fit on the, on the data, and then get the prediction. Really simple, really simple. I have done that stuff here, and this is my LR model, logistic regression, and storing the prediction on the test data on the LR predictions. Okay. If I come down the same code for the accuracy, F1 score, and everything, it gives me the accuracy here. So it has a little bit low accuracy as compared to the render forest. F1 score is still low. Precision and recall. Okay. I'm using the same functions to plot my the confusion matrix, and you can see. Look at that one. Uh, perfectly identified the DDoS attacks. Mm, not identified. Sorry for that. It means perfect classified. Okay. Classified because it's a classification problem. So it's a classify between two things, okay? So it has perfectly classified DDoS attack, B9, perfectly 8000, okay? But there's some some entries, some records, it it, it, it has some error to, it, to classify those entries. So these are 73 here, 94. Just go and understand the confusion matrix, then you will know what these two things are. These are actually false positive and false negative things. 
but I'm not going to explain you here. You have to learn it by yourself. Okay. Now let's move to the uh, machine. Uh, I mean, I mean not neural network. Okay, MLP means the multi-layer per subtron classifier. Okay, it takes the hidden layer, hidden layer size that is ten. So there, there's some some hidden layers which has neurons the size of 10 so middle line is 10 let's let's read it wow what what, what that means so you if you don't understand anything you just come on the google and you can learn from the pictures okay look at that one this is neural network so what i'm saying here okay if we have the inputs that's fine no issue this is the hidden layer so i'm saying i just need one layer with the, these 10 neurons one two three four ten minus ten okay after that, just give me the output. I just defined one layer. But you can customize this model. You can put the five layers, 10 layers, 20 layers. You can make this model more complex, okay? You can test it, train it, again, change the layers. It's up to you. You can do a lot of experiments. But what I'm doing this thing at this moment. Just only one hidden layer is there, okay? It's, by the way, similar to the brain neurons, but it's fine. Okay, the same stuff. Iterations means epochs run 10 times on my data. Okay, fit on the data, test on the data, and after that, I'm, I'm using all those equation again and measuring the accuracy, F1 score, precision, recall, and look at that one. It got the 98% accuracy, F1 score, same, recall, and precision. More better than a logistic regression. Okay. Now, again, I'm drawing the confusion matrix, and you can see the confusion matrix of that one here. Now, the, the we have trained in random forest, logistic regression, and the neural networks. Okay. Now, the question is, question is to, to compare three models. Of course, you can compare here with the help of three things, accuracy, F1 score, and precision recall. You can easily compare which one is better and which is not, okay? But for example, if you're training 20 models, 30 models, 40 models, okay, at that moment you cannot compare with just 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 remembering the accuracy of each model and compare that, okay, which which one was better. And also it it involves a lot of other parameters. You have to consider the precision recall in your mind to compare all those models, okay. Still, we can compare the accuracy of three models, but we have to keep in mind precision as well. Okay, recall as well. So there's one concept which is the ROC curve. That concept is used to to check which model is is which which whose perform whose model perform is really good. Okay, means it is used to compare the machine learning models concept in a simple way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm as you remember on the top, the this was the random forest model, trained one. This is the logistic regression, trained one. This is the neural network, trained one. What I'm doing here, I'm just using the function to predict proba. So on the top, uh, if you look at there, I have used the function dot predict and given my data inside. So when you use the function predict, it gives you the uh, answer in the form of zero and one, means it gives you the is zero and one but here you get the probabilities of both of them probabilities of means that if i here it says that predicted probability will return you that what's the probability of zero or one in the output of any model so what we do we we will store those probabilities and we will pick the maximum probability Okay, what I'm doing here, I'm saying that, okay, pick the maximum probability, either might be zero, I mean, benign has 2% probability, and then DDoS attack has 8%, so we, we are picking the 8%, the maximum one from here, giving the true labels, and this function, we are calculating the A, the RF, <coughs> false positive rate, and true positive rate, which is uh, actually, which helps us as to calculate the AUC area under curve. Yeah. So these are two par parameters you can calculate uh, from the confusion matrix. So false positive rate, true positive rate. Okay. We also call them recall and precision, which I have calculated above. 
to calculate the AUC, I'm give I'm giving you as an input there, okay, in the same of a three models. Now, that's the main thing. Let's move. Let's look at the image first. So as I told you, AUC AUC means area under curve. See, the more area area, uh, the more area is under the curve means the more better the algorithm is. Okay. Look at that one. Render for us has complete data under the curve. Means it's the best one of all of them. Logistic have zero, zero, zero. Right. Okay. This is the curve. You can ex you can learn this code. That's self-explanatory by yourself. That one. Thank you.